Hello folks and welcome to GED Microlearning. My name is Dr. MCR and this is GED Math Test 21. Today's first basic arithmetic question involves rounding off. A store is selling four cans of corn for 97 cents. To the nearest 10 cent, how much would five cans of corn cost? All right, so this problem involves you doing three um, different things. The first thing that you want to do is that you want to find out how much one single can of corn costs. Okay, so the way you do this is you're going to take that 97 cents and divide it by four. Okay, four cans. That would give you 24 cents, which is how much one single can costs. And in the question, they're asking you for five cans. Okay, so you would simply add those 24 cents plus the 97 cents that four cans cost for a dollar 21 cents for five cans. Okay, if you're doing this with a calculator, not not a problem. Uh, just remember though that if um, you'd have to do this without a calculator, uh, just remember to align your decimal points when you add. Uh, numbers with decimal points. Okay. All right. So that would be the second step. And then finally, the third step is the rounding off. So we use decimals in our daily life, especially when we deal with money. Okay. So if, for example, you had $20.56, you know that everything to the left of that decimal point is going to represent dollars. And that first position is going to represent ones. Um, and the second position is going to represent tens. And if you look at the right of the decimal point, you know that that's going to be cents. Okay, so the first position would be tens, tenths, and then hundredths. So in this case, they're asking you to round off to the nearest um, ten cents, okay, which is here. Excuse me a second, folks. I'm just running out of battery. Okay, so the rule for rounding off is, is this. Whenever you have to round off a number, what you do is that you look at the number to the right, in this case, one. And if that number is more than five, you're going to round up. And if it's less than five, you're going to round down. So in this case, we're rounding down. So our correct answer would be A, $1.20. Question two is an applied arithmetic problem looking at probability. So there are some questions in the GED which ask about probability and statistics. And probability is simply whether something is likely or unlikely to happen. There are seven candies in a jar. Four of them are lemon, two are strawberry, one is orange. What is the probability of selecting a lemon candy from the jar? All right, so as always, folks, step by step. So first thing, how many candies do we have in the jar? So we have seven candies, all right? So total number of candies is seven. And then let's find out how many lemon candies we have. So it says four of them. Okay, so if you wanted to select the probability, find out the probability, then all you have to do is divide the number of lemon candies, which is four, by the total number of candies. And that would give you 57%, okay? So every time you stick your hand in that jar, you have a 57% chance of getting a lemon candy. Um, and if you wanted to just double check your work or, you know, have kind of like a ballpark guess for this question, uh, what you could do is that you could change the total number of candies to eight instead of seven. And then here you see it's very clear, right? If you had um, eight number, eight candies in total um, and you wanted to see how many lemon candies, um, you know, the probability of getting a lemon candy, here it's very clear it would be 50%, right? So uh, one in two chance. So this is just a way to double check your work or, you know, take a ballpark guess before you actually do the problem. All right, so the correct answer would be B. Question three is an algebra problem. So um, this question is not only an algebra problem, it's also going to test your ability to read tables. So it says, if the temperature is 77 Fahrenheit, which they represent with the letter F, what is the temperature in Celsius, which is represented with the letter C? So if you look at the table, uh, there's two rows, and the first row is essentially telling you that if you want to convert a temperature from Fahrenheit to Celsius, so from F to C, you would use that formula. C is equal to 5 ninths multiplied by Fahrenheit minus 32. 
And if you wanted to do the opposite thing, so to convert a temperature from Celsius to Fahrenheit, you would use that equation, okay? So in the question, <coughs> excuse me, what it's asking us is to uh, change the temperature from Fahrenheit to Celsius. So we would use that first formula, and you can basically ignore the one at the bottom. Okay, so what you're going to do now is you're going to find out the temperature in Fahrenheit, which is 77, um, represented, as we said, by the letter F, and you're going to plug it into that equation. Okay, so um, remember that when you solve mathematical equations, you have to follow a specific order or sequence. So in this case, the first thing that we're going to do is that we're going to figure out the parentheses. Okay, so we would subtract 77 Fahrenheit minus 32. Okay, that gives us 45. And then now you can multiply um, 5 times 45 and divide that by 9. And that gives you 25. Okay, so 77 Fahrenheit is the same as 25 degrees Celsius, which is answer D. Question four is another algebra problem. And it reads, what is the sum of the exponents in the expression 8x to the power of 4 plus 13x squared plus 4? Okay, so when you look at this, it, it does look a little bit intimidating, I will admit, because you have that x raised to the 4. Um, but it's actually super simple. So it turns out that when you add exponents with the same base, so in this case the base would be x, um, this is a really simple operation. So when you have, uh, for example, x raised to a plus x raised to b, so they have the same base, all you have to do is you have to add those exponents. So in this case, we would say a plus b. Okay, if we look back to our problem, we have x to the power of 4 plus x to the power of 2. So again, our exponents have the same base. They both have uh, x as their base. So all you have to do is add the exponents 4 plus 2. That gives you 6, which is answer D. Okay, so this, this rule only works when the exponent has the same base. Okay, if it has a different base, it's a different story. But... Um, you know, if you have the same base, subtraction, addition, etc., very straightforward. All right, our final question is a geometry problem, and um, as I've mentioned always, geometry, you have all the equations in your formula sheet, so you don't have to memorize anything, but do make sure that you are able to use the formulas, because these are easy points that you can, you know, miss if you don't know um, how to use these formulas. So it says, Ricky just built a new swimming pool, which is shaped like a cylinder, uh, with the dimensions below. What volume of water can the pool hold? All right, so here the first thing that we want to know is what the uh, diameter of the pool is, which is 10. And then we also want to find out the radius. And the radius is simply uh, half of the diameter, so it would be 5. And then what you would do is to look at your formula sheet, which they provide for you, as I said, and look for the volume of a cylinder, okay? Because it's asking you how much this cylinder-shaped pool can hold. All right, so the volume of, of a cylinder is pi multiplied by r squared multiplied by h. r represents the radius, which we said is 5, and h represents the height of the cylinder, or in this case, the height of the pool, which is 4 feet. So all you're going to do is you're going to plug those numbers into your equation so that it looks like this. And again, remember when you are doing any sort of operation, you have to follow the sequence or the order of operations. First thing that we're going to do is parentheses followed by exponents. So um, in this case, we would figure out the exponent, so 5 squared. So 5 squared is equal to 20, uh, 5 times 5, which is 25. So you end up with this. And then 25 times 4 is going to be 100. And remember that the value of pi is 3.14. So you end up with a volume of 314, Okay, which is answer B. 
All right, folks. Well, thank you so much for your time. I hope you found that useful. Thank you so much for watching. Those of you who are taking the exam this week, all the best to you. Stay positive and stay strong. Have a great week. 